your exams are approaching, your assignments and assessments are piling up. So I thought, what could really help you now would be some time management tips. Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Chi Wei. I graduated from Malacca Matriculation College. So, if you're a matriculation student, then you should know that this program is super fast-paced and hectic because we basically need to cover our whole pre studies in just 10 months. And like I said in my previous videos, in my opinion, I think the key to excel in metrics is just two things, self-discipline and time management. So today, I'll be sharing with you the time management techniques that I use that help me be active in extracurricular activities, edit videos for YouTube, while taking care of my studies without feeling stressed. So make sure to stay till the end of this video because I'll be sharing with you like the importance of mindset and a few more hacks to help me live a more effective and productive life. The first technique is to always make a daily schedule either the night before or the first thing in the morning. Yes, I know this sounds really basic, but I strongly believe that this is the first step to getting things done. Because when you plan out your day, you know exactly what to do during that specific span of time. So you won't like just sit there procrastinating, not knowing what to do. And at the end of the day, you wasted the whole 24 hours when you can actually do a whole lot more stuff. And that definitely happened to me. I'm guilty of that. And that's why in college, I always plan my day the night before. And that actually makes me feel less anxious because I'm certain that I'll get things done. Okay, so now let's talk about how can we make a more effective daily schedule. There are actually certain techniques that could make a big difference to your productivity and they are called task batching and time blocking. So essentially, task batching is the practice of batching similar tasks together and doing them all at once instead of addressing them separately throughout the day. For example, I don't do my report and then edit a video, come back and do an assignment, design a poster and then go for a run. Instead, I would do my report and assignment together and then design a poster and edit a video together and then go for a run. Or another example that you can apply this is that instead of replying to your emails one hour every day, which is in total seven hours, you can actually do it two times a week and two hours each day. So in total, it will be four hours. By focusing solely on similar tasks, whether it's studying or doing what you enjoy, you are able to create a more concentrated workflow with minimal distractions and procrastination. Okay, here comes the interesting part. So why is task batching effective? Okay, the truth is, many of us tend to develop a habit of context switching, or in other words, task switching, and failing to focus fully on either of them. Have you ever felt like you have been busy for the whole day, but then at the end of the day, eh, you actually like didn't get anything done? So... Context switching is actually what makes us feel tired and unproductive because our brain actually needs time to catch up when we move from task to task. And that's why when we are in a certain mode, it is better to stay in that mode until the task is done. Time blocking, on the other hand, matches well with task batching because it saves you from scheduling every single task in your to-do list. You just need to block off chunks of time each day or week to complete a certain batch of activities. The importance of time blocking can be explained by the Parkinson's law, which states that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So for instance, if you give yourself one hour to write an essay, you're going to use that one hour to write an essay. But if you give yourself two hours to write the essay, chances are you will use the whole two hours to do the exact same thing. And that is why it's important for us to actually block our time and estimate so that we don't waste the extra time we have. But do take note to never underestimate your time because this is like a very common mistake people make which results in them falling behind schedule. You have to make sure that you allocate sufficient time for your own tasks. So what I do is that I will always add 15 minutes to my estimated time. So let's say I'm going to have one hour to eat lunch, right? I'm going to give myself one hour and 15 minutes. So if I actually finish lunch earlier than one hour and 15 minutes, then good for me. I have like 15 minutes extra to do my next task or probably rest for a while. But let's say if lunch took longer than I expected, I have that 15 minute buffer time, right? So 
I wouldn't fall behind schedule and I'll still be able to keep track of all the things I need to do for the day. So to sum up, having a good daily schedule helps you to be more purposeful with your time and in return, you'll reduce procrastination and increase efficiency. The following tip is to make use of dead time. So a very simple example to explain this is that when waiting for a bus or waiting for your food to arrive, you can use that waiting period to either listen to a good podcast or read some revision notes. So how I actually applied it in metrics was that I know that the washing machine takes like 35 minutes to wash my clothes, right? So the first thing in the morning, I would first put my clothes in the washing machine, then I'll go and brush my teeth, wash up, clean my room, and eat my breakfast. So by the time I finish my breakfast, my clothes are ready to be collected and I can hang them to dry outside instead of just waiting there scrolling through social media for 35 minutes. Essentially, you want to organize your time in a way that you're making full use of your fixed time, or like I said, dead time. You have to know that some of the things, you can actually do them in parallel instead of doing them one by one. So in between context switching and making use of dead time, you kind of have to figure things out. Yeah, so I hope that makes sense to you. So the next tip is called the two-minute rule. I actually heard of this two years ago, and I think it's quite common. Uh. You probably already heard of it before. It really helps me to get things done here and now instead of putting them off. So the two-minute rule suggests that if an action can be done within two minutes, then it should be done right away. For example, washing the dishes. Like... I just, you know, just sometimes I just don't feel like washing my cup right after I use it. I just feel the temptation to leave it in the sink and wash it later. But then I just got reminded of this two minute rule. And I just tell myself like, okay, washing a cup takes less than two minutes. So just do it. Okay, just do it. And it saved me from accumulating cups in the sink and getting nagged by my own mom. So I really appreciate this rule. And you can basically apply this to anything in life. Another tip that is quite similar to the two-minute rule is something that I invented by myself. I'm not sure if it exists, but then I call it the I don't feel like it, but. So this actually helps me stick to my daily schedule. Lah. So you know how sometimes you just, you just don't feel like doing something. You just don't feel like doing that math question or you just don't feel like studying at the moment. So every time I feel like that, I just tell myself that, okay, I'll just do it for 30 minutes. I don't feel like it, but I'll just do it for 30 minutes and that's it. Okay, so it, it works because the hardest thing is actually to get started. So if you already start doing it for 30 minutes, you will kind of enter the flow state and then you'll just complete your work. So it's just kind of like a playing with your mind a little bit. Yeah, so you can try that. Last but not least, it is to realize that your time is fully under your control. So instead of saying... I'm busy, I don't have time, try practice saying that it is not my priority at that moment. Because let's be real, at any given moment, we are doing what we most want to be doing. And we are the ones who actively make the choice to do or not to do something, right? So you have to know what's your priorities, what's important, what's urgent. And the next time someone asks you why you didn't do something, you didn't do it, not because you don't have time, it's because you it wasn't your priority. So it's like a subtle mindset shift. And to be honest with you, after realizing that, after realizing this, you know, I, I felt guilty every time I tell someone that I didn't have time because deep down, I know that I just chose not to do it because it wasn't my priority. But in a good way, because it makes me more aware on how I choose to spend my time. Oh yeah, one more thing is that Having a schedule plan doesn't mean that you're restricted completely or you don't have freedom. I know it may feel like that sometimes, but then you have to understand that everything is about balance. So you don't have to beat yourself up and feel miserable every time you fall behind schedule because it's okay. We're all humans and you can choose to be satisfied with how you spend your time, but in moderation, okay? And you live a happier life. Remember... Everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. And what makes the difference is how you choose to spend your time. So as much as time management is important, it really doesn't exist until you learn how to manage yourself. Okay, so with that said, 
This sums up all the time management tips that I would like to share with you because I found them useful for myself. I hope the same goes to you. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss out on any future uploads. And you probably realize that I filmed from when the sun's up until now. It's like already at night. And actually I had... Uh, my orient is my university orientation week right now, and basically we have to wake up at eight, so it's like eight to five. Yeah, and I actively made the choice to con just to film the video, although I'm very tired because you know, like I say, it's a matter if of you whether you want to do it or not, right? So I know those matriculation students. You, I saw your comments. I I know that you guys, some of you guys are struggling, but then. You know, nothing is permanent. Uh, so you, you you really have to just try and catch up and, you know, just sit down and tell yourself that, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it, right? It's, nothing is too late. If if you feel like after watching the four flat video and then you feel like, oh no, you scored pretty bad in your UPS or anything, it's okay, right? You can chase back the marks on, you know. The, the important thing is like, you have to have that fire burning in you. Okay, so the most important thing is just don't give up. Don't give up. Choose to manage your time wisely. And you're good to go. So keep going and fighting Jayo. Okay, and I'll see you in my next video, which I don't know when, but soon. And yeah. Bye bye.